When we explore elasticity of materials, the two most commonly used terms are stress and strain. So let's see what they are and why they are necessary. All right, let's begin with something that we might be familiar with, springs. We already know that if you take a spring of length L, and let's say you stretch it by some amount, stretch it by some amount, and let go of it, it tries to snap back, which means there is a force trying to restore the spring back to its original shape. We call that force as the restoring force. And suppose that stretching that we produce, the change in length is delta L, and let's say that the restoring force that's trying to bring the spring back to its original shape, let's call that as FR, R stands for restoring. Then there is a relationship between the two, we call that as Hooke's law. And that relationship, that Hooke's law, says that the restoring force is proportional to the displacement. And we'll only look at the magnitudes over here. We don't care about the directions because strictly speaking, the restoring force is in the opposite direction of the displacement if you see properly. But anyways, <clears throat> the proportionality sign is just saying that if you increase the displacement, you stretch it more, the restoring force also increases. Makes sense if you think about it, right? And we've spoken about this in previous videos. So if you require more clarity on this, it would be great to watch that video first and then come back over here. But now the big question that we have, that we want to tackle, is can we generalize this concept to other things, not just springs? Because we've seen things like rubber band or steel, bone, rocks, those are all elastic materials as well. So can we extend the Hooke's law to them? That's the big question. All right, so let's say we have a rubber band. We have a thin rubber band, and imagine we stretch it. So let's say we stretch it by 0.1 centimeters. The number is only for representation, don't take it too literally. And if we let go of it, so if imagine we let go of this finger over here, we know again the rubber band is going to snap back, which means there is a restoring force acting over here as well. Restoring force, again, FR. So can we say over here, again, restoring force is proportional to the amount of displacement, just like for springs? Can we do that? That's the question. Well, we could, but it turns out it's not very useful to talk about restoring forces in such situations. And, and here's the reason why. Imagine instead of having a thin rubber band like this, we had, let's say, a thicker rubber band, very thick rubber band, five times thicker rubber band, but the same length, and imagine we stretch it by the same amount and the same material. Then I'm pretty sure you, you agree with me in this case that your hands would be very shaky over here. Well, because now we have much thicker rubber band. We have five times thicker rubber band, so I'm pretty sure you can visualize it'll be much harder to maintain this position. Well, the reason for that is because now you have a much higher restoring force acting over here. How much higher? Well, if you think about it, we can imagine this thick rubber band to be made up of five thin rubber bands, right? We can do that. And since each rubber band is stretched by the same amount, it produces the same restoring force, so the total restoring force will be five times higher. And that's why it will be much more difficult to maintain this position. So it means that, imagine the restoring force over here was 100 newtons, as an example. Then over here, the restoring force, over here, the restoring force would be 500 newtons. 500, five times more. So notice that even though the stretching is the same, the restoring force has changed. And it depends on the thickness, or in other words, the area of cross-section, right? That's what, that's what matters over here. Notice that the area over here was tiny. Let's say the area was one, one meter square or whatever. And then the area, the cross-sectional area over here, is five times more, it would be five area. So as the area increased, the restoring force also increases. So can we come up with a quantity that is independent of the area so that it doesn't depend on the thickness? And the answer is yes. If you take the restoring force and divide by the area, notice that number is the same in both the cases. 100 by 1 is 100. 500 by 5 is also 100. And suppose you had, let's say, three times thicker rubber band, then the restoring force would be three times as much but the area would also be three times as much. And again, if you do restoring force per area, you would again end up with 100. So a useful quantity over here would be not restoring force, 
but the restoring force per unit area. That's what's useful over here. Restoring force per unit area. And we give this quantity a name and we call that as stress. So this quantity over here is called as stress. And it has a unit of, let's see, force per area. So it will be newtons per area is in meter squared. So newtons per meter squared. And what does stress tell us? Well, just like how the restoring force in springs tell us how hard the spring is trying to snap back to its original shape, stress in general tells us how much, how hard any material is trying to snap back to its original shape. So notice that in these two cases, although the restoring forces are different, the stress is the same. And therefore, both these rubber bands will pretty much snap back in almost the same time. And you might be wondering, well, why is that? Because there's more restoring force, right? Shouldn't it snap back much quicker? Well, the answer is no, because it's five times thicker as well. If you think in terms of each rubber band, five rubber bands are there. I mean, if you think of it that way, then each rubber band is, again, putting the same restoring force. It's doing the same thing as before. So restoring force could be misleading in thinking when it, when it comes to thinking about snapping back. But so, so a more useful thing, or the more accurate one, would be to think about stress. All right, the next question could be, what does this stress depend on? Could we say that the stress is proportional to the amount of stretching? So if we were to say stretch this rubber band by 0.5 centimeters, we would have five times restoring force and so five times more stress. So could we just say stress is proportional delta L? Well, it turns out we can't do that. And here's the reason why. Imagine this time we had a five times longer rubber band. So let's say this was one centimeter long. It's relaxed length was one centimeter long. And now we have a five centimeter long rubber band, same material, same thickness. And let's say that we stretch it by 0.5 centimeters, five times more stretching. Do you think there'll be, do you think it'll be more restoring force now? I want you to pause the video and think about this for a while. All right, the answer is no. The restoring force will be exactly the same. And here's the way to think about this. You see, since we have five centimeter long rubber band, we could now assume that this is made of five such thin rubber bands. And since we have stretched by 0.5 centimeter, each of those rubber band have gotten stretched by 0.1 centimeter, the same as before. So do you see that each band is still getting the same restoring force of 100 newtons? In other words, the stress, because the area is the same, the stress now is the same as before. So just by looking at this number, we can't conclude what happens to stress. The stress, the stress is the same because if you take every one centimeter wire over here, so notice if you take every one centimeter wire or, or, or the band of every one centimeter, that's got stretched by the same amount. So to increase the stress, we need to increase the amount of stretching that's happening per centimeter, not the total stretching. That's not what matters. So if we could increase that number, then the stress would increase. So the stress depends on how much stretching is happening per centimeter, or in other words, how much you're stretching per unit length. That's what matters over here, all right? So the quantity that matters to us would be not delta L, but delta L divided by L. So amount of stretching per centimeter or per unit length. That's what matters over here. So notice in these two cases, this number is the same. 0.5 by 5 is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 by 1 is also 0 0.1. And that's why the stress and, and the restoring force is the same in both of these. And so what stress really depends on is not the change in length, but the change in length per unit length. And this quantity, this quantity, we call it as strain. Strain. And notice, it is unitless. It has no units because centimeter and centimeter cancels. So unitless quantity. We also call this as relative change sometimes. And sometimes we also multiply by 100 and think in terms of percentage change. For example, notice 0.1 by 1 is 0.1. And if you multiply it by 100, we get 10. So we could say there's a 10% strain over here. There's a 10% strain over here as well. So you can also think of it as stress depends on how much percentage change has happened in the length, not the absolute value of the change in the length, all right?
One last thing I want to do is help you remember these new qualities, stress and strain. I mean, sometimes we might get confused which one is which. So here's how I like to think about it. So usually when exams are coming close by, we get stressed from inside. And that's how I remember that stress has something to do with something that gets generated inside. And what gets generated inside is the restoring force. And that's how I remember that, ooh, stress is related to the restoring force. And similarly, when, when you lift something, lift something very heavy, chances are that your muscles get pulled. And we usually say that your muscles are being strained. And that's how I remember that strain has something to do with something being pulled or change in length. 